Hello, hello, brothers and sisters. It's a new week. We're very happy to welcome you to our show titled Speak of Africa. We have a lot of news for you. We told you this channel is your channel. We created this channel because we wanted to make sure that your voice is heard. And we can tell you this week, when you look at the news that is breaking out all over Africa and the world, people are listening to the street the African street, the street in many other countries. Because the Western media doesn't want to relate our stories, we decided to create this channel so that we can share our own stories and will be heard loud and clear by the powers that be. Without further ado, when you look at the news this week, when we look at it in context, the story that dominates the news cycle is the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. This, we talked about this two weeks ago, especially the day when Hamas uh, made an incursion into Israel. We spoke about it on our show. But we want to see, how does this affect Africans? We told you before that the conflict is dividing Africans into two camps. Okay? And we gave you political, economic, and social reasons why Africans are divided into two camps. On the one hand, you have the camp supporting Israel. On the other hand, you have the camp supporting Palestine. And we made you understand that since 1973, Israel has used money to really buy the love and loyalty of a lot of Africans, especially Africans south of the Sahara, from countries like Cameroon, Togo. They have bought their loyalties. So you'll be surprised that this time, a lot more African countries are pro-Israel. You will not believe it, but it's true. They are pro-Israel. But with the news today, our emphasis is not just going to be on Israel. We want to tell you that the African youth are giants. They are exerting pressure on their colonial puppets, puppets of the Western world, to change what is happening in the moral land. Our people are now happy. You see issues like migration. Our people are running to look for greener pastures in Europe. Some of them die at sea. It's because there's no hope in their land. They come from a land where the colonial masters are using corruption to maintain corrupt leaders in power. And the, the average African youth has no bright future. They know this. They feel like they are walking dead. So they don't see why they should even be living in Africa anymore. So they want to go to a Western country where they think life is better. So these Western people are really the cause of the problems of the Africans. And the African youth is exerting pressure on the pushes and all the military guys to topple these colonial leaders. And that's what is really happening. We start our news today looking at Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso, Ibrahim Traore is fully in charge. He was able to foil a coup attempt. Now he is very, very happy that he sits well on the throne of Burkina Faso, a very small country. He's presenting himself as the reincarnation of uh, Thomas Sankara. In fact, this week, the street that used to bear the name Charles de Gaulle. You know, Charles de Gaulle is the master of Frank Afrique, the guy who created those colonial documents which ended up imprisoning Africans, enslaving Africans under France. His name is Charles de Gaulle. So, Ibrahim Traoré decided to change the name of the street from Avenue Charles de Gaulle to Avenue Thomas Isidore Sankara. So this was a very, very good propaganda <laughs> move, and the people are very, very happy. It may just be a symbol, but it means a whole lot to the African uh, populace. They look at him like a hero who is bringing back Sankara. As much as things are really tough for Ibrahim Traoré on the ground, he's not really making a good inroads. Because when we look at the strategy of eliminating the, the French, then fighting the jihadists, he, he has not really been doing very well. But he's using Thomas Sankara as a weapon, a, a propaganda weapon, to keep the loyalty of the people close to home. Okay? So when he talks about Sankara, this brings back positive memories to the people of uh, Burkina Faso. 
Mm -hmm. So this is what is really happening. So we saw the picture of uh, the unfolding of the new uh, street, Avenue Thema Sankara. So instead of calling it uh, Charles de Gaulle Avenue, now it has become Thema Sankara Avenue. So this is a very good thing. Africans like it. Why? Why do you put the name of someone who killed Africans in their own country? So it's a good thing they are renaming this. We like this, but at the same time, you can see that Burkina Faso is really supporting the other countries that have organized coup d'etat, like Mali and Niger. They are forming a team so that Niger is not isolated. Gabon is not isolated. So now all these countries that have, have coup d'etat, Burkina Faso is joining them as a force. Mali is also among the countries. Okay, So that's, this is what is really happening. From Burkina Faso now, we take you to La Republique du Cameroon. La Republique du Cameroon is where we think another coup d'etat is going to happen soon. This country has been ruled by a colonial puppet called Paul Bia. In fact, Paul Bia became a prime minister first. Then after that, Aijo resigned and he took over as a president. And that was, the year is 1982. I remember in 1982, that's when I graduated from uh, Yaoundé University with uh, a degree in English. Since then, Paul Bia has remained president every time he fakes a new victory. He wins every election. He never campaigns, but he wins the election anyhow. So most of those governors, DOs, district <laughs> DOs, he uses them to fake elections on behalf of his uh, party, the ruling party. So he wins every time. And this is why the people are angry. So why organize elections? They organize elections just for, sh for, sh for show, to deceive the people, to deceive the international community that he is popular. But you and I know that he's not popular. For one, Bia had really presented his vision 2035. This vision 2035 paints a rosy picture what Cameroon will be like by the year 2035. This will be an El Dorado. But those who look at what is happening in Cameroon today, they see a tale of a failure, a sad story, a country where everything has failed politically, socially, and economically. A country where for so many years there are no good roads, there is corruption, then the youth are unemployed, the Anglophones are angry. Even today, you see people talk about Ambazonia. The Ambazonia revolution is not dead. The people are still angry. Sisiko Ayoktabe spoke again from his jail in uh, Kondengi. He's, he's telling his people that all is not lost. They are still fighting. So it's just like the case of Hamas. People were thinking that, oh, the Palestinians are docile, they are dormant, everything is over. No, don't count your eggs before they are hatched. The Ambazonia are planning a big thing. From what I'm gathering, it looks like they are planning something big. It's coming. And I'll give you guys some details. I don't want to announce it. The Ambazonians are planning something big against La Republique. I've just been gathering a lot of information and um, I will not share it on this show. So when you call me privately or you just contact me on WhatsApp, 301-760-0335. Contact me on WhatsApp. I'll give you the information. I'll give you the secret tips. What Ambazonian refugee fighters are planning against La Republique. Big, big, big. It will be bigger than what Hamas did to Israel. <laughs> so then, of course, this week, Jean Afrique also was talking about uh, Richard Bonner. He is also another critic of uh, the BIA regime because he says the country has not really gone anywhere and he's really disappointed because the rule of BIA is a, a fiasco. It, it has not, BIA has not helped the country. People were thinking that he's going to present a new deal. But when you look at the, the economy of Cameroon, when Aijo bequeath the country to Bia. It was just like a success story. But with Bia, everything has just been a failure. Failure. He wants to hang tight, stay in power. They, they control the bee. They created the bee for him, a private army, so that nobody can overthrow him. But now, after he has done all of this, he's getting close to his grave. What does he think when he looks at what he has done to his country? I guess he has a conscience, and his conscience should tell him that you've done wrong, buddy. 
You did not do well for your people. You served the colonial master, and that's why your average Cameroonian is running away looking for greener pastures in Europe and America. So it's really sad. From La Replique du Cameroon now, we'll take you to Chad. In Chad, the people are also protesting. Over a few months ago, the government of uh, Muhammad Debi, Idno, killed a lot of protesters. So this week, the people are commemorating the death of some of the people during this protest. The junta is still in power. There's been no election. So Muhammad Debi Idno is still controlling the country with the support of France. But you can see that France is now persona non grata in Africa. We think, before you know it, another coup attempt is going to be made in Chad, and the people would want freedom. The people are waking up. The African giants, the youthful African giants, are waking up to smell the coffee. And the coffee is telling them that, mm -mm, France needs to go. Mm -mm, we need to kick France out. So the whole idea is France has to go. Even in La Republique du Cameroon, this week, France was forced to begin opening the archives, their colonial archives. You know, the story in Cameroon was a very sad one. It was not easy for the people to fight the, the, the French in Cameroon. France killed a lot of opposition guys, those guys who we call liberators, Um Yobe and many others, Félix Moumier and many others. Now you need to know this story. Because a lot of Cameroonian activists have been clamoring for the truth, now Emmanuel Macron is ready to open the archives. And they are opening these archives to many Cameroonian historians. So this is going to help us tell the true story of what France really did in Cameroon. France killed so many people. There are so many books on the hidden war between France and the African natives. When France killed so many independent minded Africans because they wanted freedom. Now the story is going to be told by historians. They are working on those archives. They're going to rewrite the story. So this is not revisionism. We're going to be able to tell the truth of what really happened. In Congo DRC now, we take you. The M23 is still a menace. So uh, the president of Angola and the president of Kenya, Jao Lorenzo, and William Ruto, they met, and they want the M23 to stop being a menace. They want them to move to an army garrison, so they need to be reintegrated into the army so that they should stop wreaking havoc. But of course, you know that M23 is a rebel movement controlled by Rwanda. So Paul Kagame's hands are everywhere, so they need to really rein in Paul Kagame before they can rein in M23, because M23 is a tool in the arsenal of uh, Paul Kagame. He uses them to steal the resources of Congo DRC. So will Kenya and Angola put this theft to an end? That's what inquiry minds are saying. Next, we take you to Egypt. Tired of waiting in long lines at the emergency room or your doctor's office? You should be. Why wait in long lines for care? It's time for you to come to Lucille Urgent Care. Real care, no waiting. Lucille Urgent Care, the best place for true and loving care. Service at Lucille Urgent Care is convenient, fast, time efficient, affordable, accessible, transparent, and cost effective. Royal treatment is your right. Indeed, it's not just a privilege or pejorative. Skip the emergency room's long lines, kiss the ER goodbye, say farewell to your old doctor's office, pay less, save time, enjoy the excitement of convenience, receive immediate treatment, get the health care you need quickly and affordably. Lucille Urgent Care offers many express services, rapid COVID-19 testing, on-site prescription, preventative lab services, imaging and x-rays, urgent medical treatment for common illnesses and injuries, routine vaccines and flu shots, work-related injury services, pre-employment, occupational, annual, and sports physicals, immigration exams, and much more. Same-day treatment, rapid lab results, extended hours, weekend hours, no appointment necessary, no insurance necessary, no doctor necessary, walk-ins accepted, telemedicine available. We are open seven days a week with evening and weekend hours. We are located in Maryland, Lucille Urgent Care, 903 Half York Road, Towson, Maryland, 21204. Website, lucilleuc.com. Call at 443-275-1286 or 301 
593-4897. Egypt is also an African country. It houses our Arab brothers. And Egypt is really a country that has sold out to America and Israel. Even though Al Sisi is reflecting the position of the street, he's afraid because if he doesn't talk well, the Egyptian people in Tahi Square, they may overthrow him. A popular movement may sweep him out of power, just the way it happened during the Arab Spring. So they're thinking that if he doesn't talk well, if he doesn't support the people, for the first time, Al Sisi is now supporting the people of Palestine. Okay? He's not supporting Israel. He's not supporting the U.S. Even though the government of Egypt receives so much money from the U.S. every year, for the first time, Al Sisi is afraid to support the U.S. So he's telling us that the fault of this problem is Israel and the United States. And he said this to Joe Biden, and he said this to Antony Blinken, the Secretary of State of the United States. So for the first time, because of fear of street power, Al Sisi was forced to say the truth about this conflict. Okay? So you can see the pro-Palestinian movement out there. In Egypt, the people are supporting the people of Palestine, the people of Gaza. The solidarity of the people of Egypt is with the Palestinians. But why can they not do more than just show popular uh, support? They need to help the Palestinians. Uh, I know that they are tired of fighting. Egypt got tired of fighting and losing. And that's why they finally decided to make peace with Israel. But today, the Palestinian street is very powerful, and the Palestinians and other Arabs also have a lot of power. So we're hoping that they may be able to do something to change the tide in this conflict. Hezbollah is in the north, and they too are preparing to join the fight. And of course, Big Daddy Iran is playing behind the scene. Okay? Whenever you see Hamas fighting, it's just like in my tribe, we have a saying. When you see a little bird dancing on a tree, you should know that the master drummer of that little bird is hidden in the forest nearby. The master drummer of Hamas is Iran. So Iran is the one playing the game, teleguiding everything that is happening in Gaza. The United States knows this, Israel knows this, but they have been fighting Iran, and the Iran of today is not the Iran of yesterday. Iran has a lot of technology, as you know. Russia depends on Iranian technology, drones, to fight the war in Ukraine. So Iran has changed from the old Iran that fought Iraq back in those days. Okay? So this th these things are changing. Next, we take you to Gabon. Gabon had staged a coup d'etat, and we told you about this. We've been talking about the coup in Gabon. But there have been developments. Brice Olingi Ngema, for one, has decided that he does not want a presidential salary. So this guy that you thought is corrupt and has been taking money and building houses in Washington, for the first time he's saying he doesn't want to take the money from Gabon. So he wants the money to go to the people. So this is a very good propaganda move. It will endear him in the hearts of a lot of Gabonese. And the next thing is, the Gabonese want him to pursue the assets, the ill-gotten wealth of the Bongos. The Bongo clan has so much money in France. And I think he would uh, endear himself to the masses if he launches a campaign to recover a lot of the stolen wealth, the ill-gotten wealth of the Bongo dynasty. If he does this, he will win favor with the people of Gabon. Then, of course, Nuruddin and Sylvia Bongo are still languishing in jail because of high treason. But the good news we received this morning is that one of the chief of staff or who used to work for Ali Bongo, has been released after spending over four years in, in, in prison. So this is also good news in uh, Gabon. But we're just waiting for new overtures if the new junta under Brice Olinki Ngema is going to do something for the people to recover a lot of the stolen wealth. Gabon is a very rich oil country. Unfortunately, the people are dying of poverty. When you go to Gabon, as we've told you in our past... Uh, videos, you see a tale of two cities. The rich Gabon, where the French enjoy life, 
and the poor Gabon where the Africans live. So it's like you seeing people trading places. Who who do you want to be? Do you want to stay in the rich Gabon or in the poor Gabon? The African people are relegated to the poor Gabon, and that's the story. Story. Then what about Niger? Niger is the, the, the road where another coup d'etat happened, and we told you the people are not uh, French puppets. They have decided that they want to kick France. They've kicked France out already. But this week, we had news that uh, Mohamed Bazoum, the former leader who was supported by Emmanuel Macron, was making plans to escape. So this plan was foiled. Wow. Is this story true or is it false? We've not been able to verify the story. But we know that with a level of security surrounding Mohamed Bazoum, how would he be able to arrange such a daring escape? Is the military junta staging this story for public consumption? We don't know. But we're going to research and get back to you and give you the truth. Do you need tax preparation services? We can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. What about Nigeria? Well, Nigeria also has a lot of news. The major news we have in Nigeria is uh, celebration. They were celebrating his life. After 26 years, most of the things he said about Nigeria are still relevant today. When we talk to Nigerians on the ground, they tell us, Fela is really a prophet. Because a lot of those programs he talked about even before he died. Like I remember one of my guys was sharing a song of Fela's uh, Army Arrangement. The same way that the Nigerian military has messed up this country, it still is happening even today. So when they celebrate Fela's life with this celebration, we think it is a reminder that Nigeria needs to learn from other countries, for example, like South Africa. Instead of focusing on oil, Nigeria needs to diversify its economy. Nigeria needs to arrest the theft of oil. Okay? Nigeria focuses too much on oil. And that's why the Naira is weak. Today, somebody reminded us that the Naira has even gotten weaker. Last week, we told you that the exchange rate was like $1 to 120 Nairas. We heard things have even worsened. $1 to 1,200 Naira. So that's sad. You would think that a country with oil should be able to have smart leaders who can manage this economy diversify it, Nigeria has a lot of fertile land. Like, look at where the Yorubas are. Look at where the Ibosa. are. Most of these areas are not arid, like the northern part. So agriculture can be mechanized in the southern part, and Nigeria can become the country feeding the entire Africa. Okay? This is what a smart leader would do in Nigeria. But do we have smart leaders? No. When you have leaders... Who don't even have a certificate and people are saying the, the certificate is fake what do you expect coconut head south africa soon will maintain its hegemony as the no, number one economy in africa because nigeria has been losing on a lot of opportunities instead of doing well diversifying the economy strengthening the naira nigeria is not doing well things are not going well and the youth are complaining they are complaining a whole lot so we have to tell you this. From Nigeria now, we tell you that South Africa is doing better. And South Africa soon would regain the mantle as the premier economy in Africa. Nigeria will just remain the most populous nation in Africa. But South Africa will become industrialized. South Africa was a nation developed by white people. Okay? You may argue with me on this. The economy is industrialized. Is diversified, so they don't only depend on just mining or agriculture. They do a whole lot, and they take advantage of education. So we hope Nigeria can emulate some of the good things South Africa has done. 
Okay? And most of these things happen in South Africa during the reign of or the wife of apartheid. So do we need white people to rule us again in order for us to build better economies? That's the question I'm asking you. Do we need white people to manage us, to be our leaders, so they enslave us again? Because if we cannot govern ourselves, we're just telling white people that we need them to help us so that they should govern us and we emerge out of poverty. Is that what we want? We take you now to Togo. Togo is an interesting country. Togo is ruled by Fore Nasingbe Eyadema. His, his father is the one who killed Silvanus Olympio, the guy, the champion of the independence of Togo. The guy came from the London School of Economics. France did not like him because he was trying to create an independent currency and push the franc aside. France did not like that. Then France orchestrated with uh, Nasingbe's father, Eyadema, to kill Sivanus Olympio. Now it's interesting that this son of uh, a murderer is playing games now. Instead of being against the military juntas in Africa, he's trying to be a conciliator. He wants to talk to them to make peace with the other people of ECOWAS. And now he's holding a meeting to see how he can broker peace with different factions in Africa. Ha ha ha. A diplomat. Really? Finally, we take you to Tunisia. This is where we'll end our news of today. Tunisia is also one of those countries that is known for the Arab Spring. We don't want to go into details, but today, the people on the street are protesting. They are pro-Palestine. The protests are big, and Tunisia is enjoying this protest, and Israel is the brunt of the protests. The people are anti-Israel, and they are pro-Palestine. And this is what you see. They are making their voices heard. So we've brought you the news. And we're telling you that this is the news that we want to be bringing to you. Feel free to be sharing news with us. Somebody hack our WhatsApp account. So we don't really have the old WhatsApp account. So we've lost a lot of uh, people who used to send us a lot of news. So we're giving you our number so that you can go back on WhatsApp and start sending us news. The number is 301 seven six zero zero three three five use this number and put my name prince ojong and be sending us news thank you very much may god bless you now more than ever it is critical that medical facilities utilize modern reliable electronic health records Introducing Alexia HTC, the innovative, affordable online solution for physicians and patients. Doctors' visits, diagnoses, prescriptions, and billing have never been easier. With Alexia HTC, you can work more efficiently with the integrated flexibility medical professionals need today. Schedule a live demonstration. Call or visit us at alexiahtc.com. you need tax preparation services, we can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.